In this video, we are going to create the UI for our chat application. But before doing that, let's create a method so that we can store our username and we don't have to enter it again and again over here every time we refresh it. And to do that, we will be using local storage and store our username in our local storage. So we'll go back to our Visual Studio code and over here, go to pages index.js file and on our on create username handler, let's remove the console log and just below this use local storage dot set item and we'll set a username over here in a key called username save this and now let's go to our component chat container so let's create a state over here to check if the username exists And let's set it to true by default. Now we can initialize it only when we are on our client side application. So let's use effect. And inside this, we'll check if we have the local storage. And if we have username key if that's the case we will set is username exist as true otherwise we will set it false and over here when we are creating a model we will also make a check if there is no username existing then only we will create our model so let's save that and see what we see on a ui so over here we see our model let's enter a username and then click on create and if we now refresh it we don't see the model again and let's see if we have it stored on our local storage so go to our application and you can see username has the username over here so let's close this now and get back to the UI creation for our application. So our application will have two sections. One is the left side section, which will store the room list. And on the right side, we will have the chat between multiple users. So let's go to chat container. And over here, let's remove this div completely. And now let's create another div from scratch. And in this div, we will have a class name and we will give this class py-5 for padding from top and bottom and similarly we will give it px4 for a padding from left and right side and inside this we will create another div and this div will have a class of row and we will also give it overflow hidden also we will give it shadow and some margin from top Inside this, give another div. This will be a column 5 div. So let's give it a class name of column 5. And padding from left and right to 0. It will also have another div for our chat messages. So let's give it another class name. And we will give it column of 7. And also padding of 0. Let's format this and save it once. Also, we'll be giving it a header so that we can show some button for creating the rooms as well as some basic information. So let's do that. Let's create header UI as a variable. And we'll use header element for it. Let's use class name. We'll give it class as text center. And inside this, we'll have a h1 tag. We can write real time group chat inside it. Also, we can have a paragraph. And let's give this also a class name with margin bottom zero. And similarly, for the H element, 
let's give it a class name and we can give display four from bootstrap we can also show a button we will work on it later on but let's create it right now and it would be of type button it will have a class name from bootstrap that is button and it can have a button primary the content would be create room let's format the code and save it let's show this header ui just above our chat section let's move it inside our div and save this and see on our browser so we have a decent ui on our browser and let's see why our paragraph element is not being shown so we have not written anything over here let's write something say collaborate with developers worldwide let's save this now and let's go back to our browser it looks good but we can give it a class from bootstrap that's lead and also if we have some bottom margin it would look good so let's do that in our code so let's give this paragraph a class of lead and margin bottom of 2 and save this so our ui looks better now and let's go back to our code and work on the chat side for the rooms as well as the messages so inside our chat container create a folder called room container and create another folder called chatbox container save it now let's create j6 files for our room container similarly let's create j6 files for chatbox container Also, let's create the CSS files for them. Again, let's create functional components for the same. Functional component for room container, save it. Also, create functional component for our chat box container and save it also we'll import the styles for it similarly for room container and save it now let's call this room container and chat box container inside our chat container so first of all import them import room container similarly import chat box container and we will have our room container on the left side so let's declare that over here and we will have our chat box container on the right side so let's call it over here and save it and let's see what appears on our ui okay so we have our application looking fine like we will be showing rooms on the left side and the chat on the right side that's good but we have this additional semicolon so let's remove this let's see from where it is coming so it comes inside this container so let's go back and see so inside our underscore app.js we have a semicolon over here inside our layout so let's remove this and save and go back to our browser so now we can see that the semicolon does not appear and we can close this console now let's first work on the room container and then we will work on the chat box container so now inside our chat container go to room container j6 file and over here let's create a temporary list of rooms so let's call it rooms list is equals to and here we will have a property called name let's say room number one for now also it will have a date called created at and we'll call it new date 
similarly let's copy it and then this will have a name called room number 2 and let's save it and remove this room container text from here and on this div let's declare a class name and we can leave it now as we don't need this and inside this let's create another div also we'll need another div after this in the first div we will be showing the list of rooms so we'll give it something meaningful in the name so in the first div we will show a text called rooms simply so that user can understand that there would be list of rooms over here so let's create a span over here and it will be having a text called rooms and on this span we'll give class name and then it would be something like h5 and we don't need a margin so we'll give it margin bottom and we need some padding from top and bottom so we'll give it padding y1 also the div above it we can give it background gray as well as we can give it padding from left and right so give it px4 and similarly from top and bottom let's give it py2 also we can try out some more things at the time we have the application ui rendered so before that let's do rendering of the room list let's go over here and we'll give it a class from styles that we will be creating so let's give it styles dot room box and inside this we will be having another div this div would be a wrapper of all the rooms so let's give it a class called list group and it would not be rounded so let's give it rounded 0 and padding from left and right px2 and now inside this we will loop over our rooms list so let's call it rooms list dot map and here we will have our room and room index so let's take that and for each room we will be returning the ui let's create a div inside this and let's give it a class and we have given its parent a class of list group so we'll have to give it a class of list group item and similarly list group item action so that it can be clicked and we will again give it rounded 0 some margin from top and bottom so let's give it m by 2 and inside this item we will again create a div and on this div we will give class and we will give some margin from left so let's give margin left 4 and let's create another div inside this to show our room name as well as its created date so on this div we will again give class name and it would be display flex and align items to the center and we'll justify content as justify content in between and we will also give it margin bottom uh, let's say 1 over here let's give it h6 and we can give it a class name again and we can give it margin bottom as 0 let's show the name over here uh, and the name would be room dot name let's fix the typo and just below the h6 we'll be showing the date so let's show it over here and we can again give it a class name we can give it small text as well as font weight bold for now we can simply write down the date directly and later when we have the date we will use it so let's right now use let's say 1st april 
and then save it so let's see what appears on our ui so in our application if we go back to the browser we have our room names listed like this which looks good and clean to me so now let's work on the chat box container and we'll show the messages over here also before that since we have our ui up and ready we what we can do is we will create a separate component for the repeated code and let's call it room and let's create jsx for it and let's create a react functional component for this let's cut this code from here and replace this div with our code let's format the code and this will receive two arguments one is the room name and second argument will be created at date let's fix this and remove the room dot name to name save this for now and go back to our container over here let's import the room and let's call this room over here we can also remove these brackets and we can directly call our room like this but we have to pass our name over here so let's pass the name like room dot name and we will have our created date so let's pass created at is equals to room dot created at and let's format our code and save it and let's see if the ui looks same so our ui still looks the same and it looks good so let's proceed with the chat box container again so in our components go to chat container open chat container and let's open the jsx file for it also in our room container we will have to pass a key props on our room otherwise the browser will give warning so let's pass key as room index for now and save this this should be unique you should use uuid4 or something similar in order to generate dynamic ui ids but for now let's go with room index for simplicity and get back to our chat box container and on this remove this chat box container text and let's create a class and instead of using string let's use delt for it so that we can pass dynamic classes inside it and once we have it we can use display flex from bootstrap so let's use dflex also we'll have it in the column format so let's use flex column and we will also use justify content between and we'll give it padding bottom 0 So inside this div we will have two part first is the list of messages which will be scrollable and just below that we will be having a send message button and a input field so let's create the messages scrollable part and to do that create a div and inside this div we will have the list of messages so before that let's create a class name for it and for this we will again be having dynamic styles so let's use tilde for it and let's give it scroll and padding from left and right such as px4 and we can give a dynamic class later on let's do the simple stuff first and here we'll be having a list of messages so let's create some temporary messages over here we'll be replacing these later on using our socket.io it will have two fields for now we can add more later on so one would be the name from the message sender and the message of the sender and let's say it hi and let's call another sender as guest for now and the message would be how are you let's save this also we can change the name from full name to our username so that we can show the messages in left and right format since the start so let's do like this and save this and now we will iterate over the messages over here similar to how we iterated over the rooms 
using messages dot map and we'll have the property called message and the message index so let's close this bracket and over here again we'll be having a div so let's create a div inside the function before that let's fix this bracket issue i think that's fine now we don't have any error one more thing we need is we need a username to compare the message sender username and the username of the logged in user so let's go to our index.js file and over here we will pass the username down to chat container let's pass it over here so we have a username passed to the chat container so let's go to the chat container over here we will receive the username so let's pass that over here to the props and similarly let's pass that to our chat box container like this and save this so we'll receive the same over here in our chat box container so let's take it over here and again save it so here we will have to place the sender's message on the left and receiver that is us on the right side so what we can do is let's remove this bracket and let's use curly brackets to enclose our div for now later on what we will do is we will create a separate component for it once we have the messages shown in the right way just above this div we will have a variable for our message box container so let's call it let message box container class and this would be empty by default but in case if we have a username is equals to equals to message dot name of the sender in case this is us then we will be showing the messages on the right side otherwise we will be showing them on the left side so for that first let's go on our div and then use class name is equals to and we will be using display flex and we will align items to the center let's also have another div inside it and it will have padding from left hand side which has px2 and inside this we will have a span to show our author name we will give it a class and it would be of class name and over here let's show the name of the author and it would be message dot name and just below this span we'll use a paragraph and inside this message we'll have a message rendered like message dot message so let's save this and also we need to return our dom jsx so let's save it and now see what appears on our ui so you can see the messages appear on our ui but the message for which we are sending is not appearing on the right side so let's fix that so in the condition that we have shown over here if it's our message in that case we will add classes to show the message on the right side so first class that we will be using is text right this will align our text on the right side so let's see what appears on the screen once we save it and add it to our list so to add it to our list let's change the class to dynamic way and we'll use dollar class name that we are having dynamically and then join using spaces and this will join the classes that we are adding dynamically with spaces over here let's save this and see on the browser also before that let's add key for it over here key is equals to message index format the code and save this once again so if we check our browser our username doesn't still shows on the right side this is because we have checked the username in local storage only in our model that creates a username not on our root element where we have our index.js so to do that go back to our code and over here inside our index.jsx where we are initializing our socket let's check
if we have local storage as well as in this local storage if we have our username let's check that if we have it then let's set the username to the one we have set in our local storage and click on save and now if we go back to our browser we can see that the username is still on the left but when we inspect it we can see that the text right class has been applied and to the one below it the text right doesn't applies this is because the content inside the div aligns itself to the right side but the div itself is not aligned to the right side so let's fix that going back to our application let's close index.jsx and chat container and in our chat box container file we have text right over here we'll also add a class called justify content and 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 let's save it now and see our browser and you can see our username shows on the right side and the guest username shows the message on the left side but the ui does not looks good enough for now so let's improve our ui before we proceed further also first let's move this code in a separate component let's create a message box component and then create a jsx file inside it and we can cut the entire code from here let's create a react functional component over here and inside this we can remove this return statement and paste the component code that we have copied over here and format it so this will need some arguments first argument is the username second argument would be the name for the message so let's call it name and this another argument that we'll be needing is the message itself so let's save this so now and go back to our chat box container and over here let's import this message box and let's remove this curly braces and return our message box instead of it and let's pass the props for name message and username and let's format this code also we'll be passing our key over here and we can remove the key from this div in our message box and save it also let's format this code and save it over here and check the browser so we have a error over here this is because we have a typo over here in the message box so let's fix this quickly inside our message box let's use username and instead of message dot name we will be comparing it to the name directly and similarly over here we will be showing it directly like this on name and i think that's fine for now and let's save it and now everything works like how it worked before so let's go back to our code and improve the ui and add the input for the message as well as send button now let's go to our chat box container and over here we will add a class we will add a class and call it chat box container and we will use it in our css file we will give it a background color as well as we can give it some other properties but let's see what appears for now so it looks good right now we can improve it more so just below our messages let's create another div and inside this div we will have an input element and a button for input we will give class we will have some padding at the start so let's give ps2 we will give it a placeholder 
stating type a message similarly for the button we will have class of button and button success and we will have a text message called send and let's save this to see what appears on the ui let's fix the typo before that and also let's add classes for the parent of this div and we'll give it display flex also justify content between and save this and now you can see that a send button appears on the right side and the message box appear on the left side and now let's make the width of this message box appear up to the send button and to do that let's again make the input as a dynamic class so let's enclose this inside curly braces as well as change the string literal ps2 remains same we will need some padding at the start as well as we'll need the class for input box so let's call it message input so there is a dot between message and style and now save it go back to the css file over here we can give message input let's confirm the name we can give it width of approximately 95% as well as we can give it some font weight of 400 and we can disable the border and make it none also we'll disable the border on focus so let's do that as well on focus we'll make the outline as none Let's format the code and save it and let's go back to our browser and see the message input. So this looks good but it would be great if we had a fixed height for our message list and we can do that too. So going back to our visual studio code. So just below our chat box container we will add another class. Let's call it chat box wrapper. and go to our css file now and this will have a fixed height of let's say 500 pixels as well as we can give it overflow on y-axis that is overflow on the top and bottom and only on these we will be scrolling so let's save this now save this over here as well and on our browser you can see that it looks much better now also in our chat box container let's enclose our button inside another div and let's give this class name and then display flex as well as justify content center and padding at the end of let's say padding and 3 and save it so let's move on to our next video that is to create a chat room using socket.io and see you in the next video